Hey friends, welcome back to Adobe's YouTube channel. My name is Jess Goldsmith. I'm an illustrator and lettering artist with about a decade of experience in the industry, and now I'm bringing my knowledge straight to your screens. This is episode seven of my series, Mastering Typography and Text-Based Design in Adobe Illustrator. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create custom illustrative brushes that you can use in your type work or to embellish already existing typography work. Creating these brushes for customization is super easy, so let's get to work. Episode seven, create custom brushes in Adobe Illustrator for type embellishment and more. I'll start off by showing you how to create a really simple brush. Create three circles, make each of them a different color. Group them together and then drag them to your brush panel. If you can't find your brush panel, open it in the drop down window menu or over here on the right side of your workspace. Drag the group of circles to your brushes panel. Select pattern brush and don't worry about these settings for right now. Name your brush whatever you want. I'm naming mine circles one. Now type out your word. I'm using the font Cooper Black Italic with the word create. Outline your type and then click the brush we just created in the brush panel. Whoa, okay, that doesn't look good. Um, but don't worry, we can just head over to the stroke settings and adjust and the sizing of the circles will move accordingly. I really like using these custom brushes with the paintbrush and pencil tools to write out my text rather than using them as a stroke on outline typography. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. Let's say I wanted to create a brush that looks like a pencil. So first I'll create a simple pencil design with some primitive shapes. I'm using a yellow rectangle, I'm rounding off one of the sides, and I'm using the shape builder tool to make that green metal eraser holder thingy and the pink eraser. Now I'm going to the other end and using a triangle to make the tip and the carbon of the pencil. And then I'm just creating a jagged ending to the yellow part. Okay, great. Now let's group all of this together and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did with those circles by dragging it to the brushes panel, selecting pattern brush and hitting okay. Let's see how this looks, writing out the word create again. Okay, yeah, that looks cool. But let's add another layer to this and create a brush that only uses the pencils as one pencil. I don't know if that really made sense, so I'm just going to show you the example right here. <laughs> Achieve this effect by breaking up your object into three parts, front, middle, and end. You can do this with the eraser tool or the knife tool, it really doesn't matter. Now grab each part separately and drag them to your swatches panel. You can find your swatches in the top window menu or on the right side panel here. Now drag each individual piece to your swatches panel, the front, the middle, and the back. Go back to your brushes panel and hit the plus sign to create a new brush. Select pattern brush. These three boxes are where you're going to select the middle of your pencil. The last two boxes will be the start and the end of your pencil, the eraser and the tip. These two boxes here allow you to adjust the settings of how the turns in your curves and corners behave. The drop down menus will show all of your currently added swatches that you can select from. Add your swatches to these boxes accordingly with the middle piece in the first three boxes, the eraser at the fourth, and the tip at the fifth. The corner pieces might need some adjusting and there are a few settings that you can choose from to get the one you want. Hit OK and apply the brush to your letters. Know that this technique doesn't work very well on closed paths like the outline text we have here, but it looks great on this version that's made with open paths using the pencil tool. You can apply this technique to create brushes with ribbons, florals, and you can even layer them. But this next one is my absolute favorite. I have a little puggy at home. Her name is Ruby and I love her. So I'm going to turn her into a brush. <laughs> First, I'm going to make a really simple illustration of her and I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, great, now we have this illustration. We're going to use the same technique, but it's important that the height of each of our three objects is the same in each swatch. Otherwise, the edges of the pieces won't match up. Here you can see that all of the pieces have different heights. The way that I'm going to fix this is to put each piece into clipping masks with the same exact height and make sure that the pieces are aligned to each other within those clipping masks. The width can be different and should match up exactly onto the edge of your illustration to avoid unwanted spacing in your brush. Now follow the same steps by dragging the individual parts to your swatches. 
follow the same exact steps in your brush panel, and now you have a little doggy ruby brush. Like I said earlier, you can really do this with any illustration you can think of, and I think this is just such a fun, funny, and unique way to customize typography. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jess Goldsmith, and you can find me at Chick of All Trade or at Women of Type. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad that you're here, and don't forget to subscribe to Adobe's YouTube channel. See you on the next one.